Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardOCP.com, and today what we're going to do is we're going to give you a little roundup of our AMD Ryzen Threadripper water block performance that we've seen from all of our competitors here this year. And uh, this is our AMD Ryzen CPU if you hadn't seen one. This is their 1950X. This has seen a lot of action. But uh, this has been our primary testing uh, CPU all year. And uh, let's look at the results of what our water blocks did. So we're going to cover five water blocks today. And uh, we're going to go from worst to best. This has been our worst performer. This is the EK Evo Supremacy TR4 Thread Ripper Water Block. Very nice construction, very nice finish, very nicely done, very utilitarian outside maybe the little logo here. But quite frankly, all they did was use their existing uh, water block technology that they had for their Intel blocks and apply it to this. And quite frankly, it just ended up being the only block out of the five or six that we've tested this year that I would suggest you not purchase. What was really interesting was a few websites had this block before we did up to a month before we did. We ended up purchasing this block and none of the websites that ended up uh, showing off this block ever actually reviewed it for EK. So I think that says something about it and uh, is what it is. But anyway, so this one on our chart came in at a temperature of 74.1 degrees um, Celsius across the die package. And this is on a Threadripper 1950X overclocked 4 gigahertz at 1.417 uh, V-Core. But while this is still shows to be 9 degrees from throttling temperature, what it did happen, what did happen was the fact that we still had failures during testing. So the EK is the only block today that we looked at in the last six months that I would suggest you absolutely not purchase in its current uh, design phase. Hopefully they'll go back and address this. Block number two today is the Swiftec Apogee SKF uh, TR4. This has a new fin design from uh, Swiftec. It came in at 68.3 degrees in our charts. It's very nicely finished, very well put together. Got a great look to it. The uh, 68.3s comes in number four on our chart. Did a great job cooling, had no complaints. What was really interesting about this one is we found that the, uh, the mounting mechanisms on this are, are far from, well, let's say good. Uh, they, probably, they probably are exacting to AMD specification, which is not necessarily the best thing in the world. But uh, when we put our own mounting kit on it, this block actually performed the best. So there's some great technology, there's some great design behind Swiftec's uh, fin design. This is the Coolant CPU-400A-S. -S. This is another very utilitarian block. Been put together very, very well. Simple in its design. No frag harder disco lights, all that good stuff. The Coolants came in at 66.9 degrees Celsius across the CPU package. Uh, this put it at number three on our chart. Um, not a lot to say about this, except that it just works very, very good. The uh, hold down kit on this one is excellent. I do not think you're gonna be able to increase its performance with a better hold down kit. The block itself, or I tell you, this is how good it shows you to work, is the block itself is adapted from Coolance's uh, Intel CPU block. They have not specifically designed this for TR4, or at least, obviously the package is designed for TR4, but the block is not designed for TR4. But I think once Coolance makes some changes on this, if they do, hope that they do, hope that they do I think this one will go far. This is the Fantex 399A TR4 water block. It is also excellently put together. It's kind of chilly in here. Sorry, it had a little bit of condensation from the palm of my hand. But uh, this is a great block, has a great design, has a great look, uh, complete with uh, frag harder disco lights under these little removable panels here. Has a good hold down kit. It scored number two on our chart. It came in at 65.5 degrees die package on the overclocked uh, thread ripper. And not a, not a lot bad to say about this one at all. Uh, you'd be lucky to have one in your own box. This is the XSPC Raystorm Neo block. Um, 
for TR4, obviously. You see it's got leads on it because I have it plumbed in to, uh, to use on our, on our uh, testing system. This one did the best out of all the uh, TR4 blocks we tested this year. This one came in at 62.0 degrees C on the die package of our overclock thread ripper. Excellently put together. It's been a pleasure to use. Excellent design. So it still reigns king when it comes to uh, stock mounting. So there you have it. Those are the uh, five blocks we've covered this year. The one block that I have left out of this is the, Bi the Bixky block, which is uh, you can find at BixkyUSA.com, I do believe. I have sent that along to one of my editors, so I did not uh, include it in here. But it actually came in number two in between the XS PC Raystorm Neo and the Fantex 399A. So that is worth a look as well. So all of these blocks have in-depth in depth reviews on our website, which are linked below. And we'll do a, uh, a quick uh, article with all the links in it as well. We will also have a chart in that article with the flow rates as well across all these blocks. So there you have it. TR4 water block roundup for 2017. This is Kyle Bennett with Hardo CP.